changing. People change. Life change. Welcome to Changes. My name is Rosalyn Feli and I welcome you to the most watched show on television at 3 p.m. I'm excited about this particular episode. Now, I'm excited about every episode, but this one in particular, I am more excited about it. In recent times, young people are dying from this particular disease. In the past, when we talk about it, we thought that it was for the aged. However, people as young as teenagers are passing away. It's becoming worrisome. On this show today, we discuss the causes of high blood pressure. Can it be prevented? Or are there things that we can do to be able to curb it? Let's talk about it right here on Changes. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, I have two doctors right here with us. Stay with us. Changes. Welcome back. You are still watching Changes. My name is Rosalind Feli, and today we are talking about high blood pressure. I'm here with two doctors who help us through it. Uh, it's actually very worrying when we think about it, doctors. Welcome. How are you? Good. Okay. It's good to have you here. Good, good to today. have you too. Great. I hope today you're going to help us uh, to get to know how we can prevent this from happening. Uh, if it's preventable and uh, the causes as well we'll be talking about the causes and we'll be talking about how to manage it because there are you know some people out there who have a lot of questions when the doctors tell them that they have it or they are diagnosed with it they have a lot of questions and so these doctors are going to help us through i have a dr george estiama jr he is a medical director at c4c doc welcome once again Thank you. and also i have a dr kuntu Blankson, Echo Kunti Blankson. He's also a medical doctor at Police Hospital. Welcome, Echo. Thank you. I hope you're well. I'm well. Okay. So now when we talk about high blood pressure, I said earlier that it's very worrying because young people are getting it and it's becoming more alarming. Uh, even teenagers are getting it. Yeah. And it's scary now. So what is causing this? Why the increment in high blood pressure in recent times? I'm going to start with you, um, George. Okay, yes. Um, thank you so much. Uh, the increment, uh, first of all, I would love for us to know what exactly the hypertension itself right. is. Um, then we will get to know what really brings about it. Um, hypertension or blood pressure itself, let's say blood pressure, the heart beats, it pumps blood. Blood has to go into other parts of the body organs. So there should be a pathway for the blood. Mm -hmm. Hence, there is what you call arteries or blood vessels. Okay. This is where the blood, whenever the heart beats, it pumps the blood through the blood vessels. And so the kind of force or pressure, anytime there is a beat, there is a bit of pressure. So the kind of force or pressure that the heart use in pushing the blood through the blood vessels is what you call blood pressure. Okay. But ideally, it's supposed to be in a certain range. But when the pressure goes up, then we say it is high blood pressure. Okay. So it's not like literally that maybe the blood in your system is too high, so we should drain some mm. out from your body. Mm. It means that the heart is working, but the space at which it's supposed to be working is too high now. Okay. And so, so the- So it means your heart is beating faster? Is that sort what of, it is? Yes, okay. sort of, yes, mm. sort of. So the pressure that has to move to the walls of the uh, blood vessels. When it gets too high, then we say the pressure is high. Ideally, the pressure is supposed to be what we call systolic, which is what we usually write at the top. And then you see we draw a bar and then we write something also at the base. Okay. So systolic and diastolic. The systolic, which is the one on the top, ideally has to be 120. Mm. Okay, and then the down has to be 80. So when you have this measurement, that is what is normally accepted that you should be within this range. And so if it's above this range for a number of times, then with some symptoms, then we confirm you to be hypertensive. So okay. hypertension comes as a result of the pressure the blood is, ex the, the heart is exerting on the walls mm. of the blood vessels. Mm. Yes. Okay, you said you speak about the, the increment, but yes. then before we speak about the increment, if I should have high blood pressure, what are some of the things I need to look out for and you know, get alarmed and rush to the hospital? Doc Echo. Okay, so um, I mean, a lot of people think that um, we should expect something, and sometimes we do, but the majority of the patients have no symptoms at all until it is rather too late. And so um, I like to liken the 
blood pressure and its consequences to the plumbing of a building. Okay. You you know that uh, there are there are pipes in the in the building bringing water to to your bathroom and to wherever you need it. But when the pressure is too high, you won't notice it on the walls or the building will shake or anything like that. But then when it bursts, you will see that at some point the building will start getting wet, some part of the building will start getting wet. Mm. So it depends on where the problem happens that you might have some symptoms. And unfortunately for most people, the first time they have any symptom at all is when they have a stroke. And so you can go on and on about telling the patient to um, take their drugs and whatnot. Because they have no symptoms, they don't see why they should. Wow. And so we tell them, are you waiting for it to happen to you? Before but but if you don't have a symptom, how are you told to take a drug? Yes. So definitely, if we could tell, um, that's why we need to measure your blood pressure when you come to the hospital. So someone can actually walk in and say he's coming to do a routine um, checkup. Check up. And sometimes someone is even bringing someone else to the hospital. Mm. And they say, okay, let me also check my blood pressure. And some have as high as 180 and walking around. So you can have very, very high, high blood pressures and have no symptom at all. There are some symptoms of maybe sometimes headaches here and there, blood vision, not feeling too well. But the, the, main, the main thing that people normally present with is no symptoms at all. And that is why it is even more difficult to get your patients to adhere to the uh, management schemes that you put them on. Right. Now, when we talk about, you know, no symptom it's, it's, it's that that's even more scary yes. because uh, i'm walking around thinking i'm okay yeah. i'm thinking that everything is all right no headache nothing but then i have high blood pressure yes. what could be causing this uh george okay yes um the other name for hypertension is a silent killer so it means that it, it's not showing anything you are okay sometimes it's you see, most of the time when we get something like a small mal headache or something, we sometimes attribute it to, I get stressed. And so because of the stress, that's why I have this headache. So maybe if I take a rest, I'll be fine. Or sometimes if I get some painkillers, mm. I'll be fine. Okay, so the symptoms sometimes will not come as many as blevishing, headache, dizziness and all that. but. When it's, you, you experience something like a headache and you don't take a next step, you self-advise a diagnosis. Should it be yourself. like a consistent headache or just a once in a blue moon headache? Well, it's not a once in a blue moon headache, but the consistency of it can be that you, you have a frontal headache, let's say okay. a frontal mm. headache now, this morning. Most of the time it's in the morning, early morning when you wake up before you start some physical activities then circulation will come in so you feel much better right. but sometimes these symptoms of a mild headache we do nothing about it mm. and so by the time the the heart or the symptoms grow to the stage where you can't do anything about that's when they usually rush to the hospital so it's not presenting any symptom just as doc said depending on where the problem is then it will show certain symptoms mm. there are some patients who can get the headaches. Others do not get it at all. Some get numbness. Others do not get it at all. So it is very, very necessary that should you see or feel anything mm. unusual in the body, you don't self-diagnose, okay. but you look for a, special, um, a specialist or someone who has the knowledge in that to help. So these are some of the things that sometimes makes us see the symptoms and then we self-attribute it mm. to what we think we Talking know. about self-diagnosis, what if I have the machine at home and I want to use it to check myself? Is that okay? Yeah, I think that's okay. But then the machine will not... Okay, there are more modern machines that can tell you that this um, figure you are getting is right. um, above or abnormal and so you should do something about it. But the machine will normally give you the numbers. So you should know what hypertension what the values are mm -hmm. so like you said um, there are values that we put you on exercise and diet to see whether we can bring it down and put you on minim minimal alcohol taking cutting down smoking stopping all recreational drugs like cocaine and in any of those things there there's a, a level that we deal with that on the managing your lifestyle but there's uh, a le levels that when you go above, we have to bring in some uh, medications. Okay. So you need to know what values mean what, so that you can. So what? What yeah. about the phone apps? You know, uh, our recent technology and all of that. Uh, they, they tell you your phone can tell you if you are having high blood pressure or not. Does it give accuracy, or you can't rely on that? 
I think if your phone tells you that you have high blood pressure, it's only why that you go to the hospital to confirm it. Okay. So you just come. It, it doesn't take more than a, a minute to check your blood pressure. The only mm. thing is that when you get mm. there, we want you to sit down for about five to ten minutes, relax, so that we can get your resting blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Because if you run around, no matter who you are, your blood pressure will go, will go up. And that's not what we use to diagnose. We want you to have been rested. So it's like your resting blood pressure. That's what we use. So mm -hmm. walk into any clinic, sometimes even pharmacies, mm -hmm. they can check your blood pressure there and then. And then you get yes. it sorted. Okay, now let's talk about the causes. What causes high blood pressure? Okay, um, the major, I, I like to call it risk factors. Um, because hypertension itself, just as Stock was saying, they are staged. Right. And so if we are looking at types of it, the cause will come from the types. So types of it are like the primary hypertension, which most of the time, the causes of it has to do with um, our lifestyle. So if you take in too much salt, salt has the ability of retaining a lot of water in the body. So if you have too much of water in the body, it means that automatically your pressure will go up. There's a technicalities that will happen in to cause your pressure to mm. go up. Mm. Then also, if you do not exercise, it's very important. Lack of exercise is also a factor. Then we look at secondary. Secondary hypertension, which is mostly as a result of you have an underlying condition. Okay. Like say you have kidney problem, thyroid problem, diabetes. These are, the kidney plays a very important role when it comes to circulation. Mm -hmm. The circulation is very much needed when it comes to the blood pressure. Right. So if you have kidney problems, you can get that. If your lifestyle, your sedentary lifestyle, just as the doc said, taking in too much of alcohol, it's a factor. Illicit drugs, it's also a factor. So it's more of a lifestyle um, and then types of food that you eat. If you take food that contains lots of uh, fatty foods mm. that cannot, saturated food that cannot even break down um, to its finite level, you can also have some conditions that right. will lead to the hypertension. So say someone has a hyperlipidemia, that's your cholesterol level is high, it can also lead, lead to the to hypertension. Her. So most of the time, it's our lifestyle. But then there's the primary and there's the secondary. Yes. Okay. The secondary means that there is an underlying condition, okay. like the kidney, thyroid, and all that. But are they all dangerous, equally dangerous? Yes, they are. And to some extent, even the secondary, it's much common in, in babies or young adults as well. Because it's, it can be that maybe you, your kidney, at a very younger age, you had a problem with your kidney. So meaning that what the kidney has to do is no longer doing it to its maximum best. So that circulation issue will come in, and then it can lead to that. Mm -hmm. If you have diabetes also, in long term, they can, the diabetes can cause the walls of the arteries to harden. Okay. And that can also mean that hypertension will come in. Right. And then, so they are all dangerous, but the most common ones that we see these days are the ones that we bring ourselves. Mm. The lifestyles and all the, that. The, the primary ones. Yes. The but those primary ones, are they preventable? Because um, <coughs> talking about the exercise, you know, our daily routine, recent times, you sit in traffic for so long and you get home and you can't even work out. You're so exhausted from a long day work. Now, how do you prevent this primary one from happening? Okay. So, the, like you said, like you rightly said, the, the types of hypertension being the primary, also known as essential hypertension, also known as the hypertension without a cause, idiopathic hypertension. And then the secondary one, which we know a definite cause for it. Mm -hmm. um, the, unfortunately, about 90 to 95% of the um, cases of hypertension fall in the bracket of the essential or primary hypertension, where we don't know the cause. And so we have the modifiable risk factors and then the ones we can do nothing about. So. For patients, for majority of our patients, which I say like 90 to 95 percent, we try to deal with, we try to do what we can do to help uh, manage the hypertension. So, like you said, the exercise and eating well, if you have other conditions, they also make the hypertension worse. Mm. And so, you have to manage the other conditions well. So, if you are a diabetic, you should be taking your drugs well. If you, like you said, high cholesterol, you have to make sure that you're taking drugs to bring down your cholesterol, exercising. And basically, when we talk about exercise, people think you have to do so much. You are, you, 
an adult African just needs to do about 30 minutes for five times a week to be for like mm -hmm. that's enough to keep you healthy that's all of moderate mild to moderate exercise so you don't even need to lift any weight or you, you just you can just walk around just brisk walking in your neighborhood greet a few people up and down that's all mm. so the exercise doesn't have to be something rigorous and when it comes to your diet fruits and vegetables Cutting down on the fats and oils. What about late night eating? You know, some people are so addicted to late night eating. They can't stop. I, I, I recollect uh, meeting a lady who exercises a lot, but she said to me, I can't stop eating at night. Uh, can one eat at night and stay away from high blood pressure? Or it works hand in hand? I, I won't say that just because you eat at night, you will have high blood pressure because there are people who do and they have normal blood pressure. Mm. So I think that as much as possible, you reduce the, uh, the evils. So if you know you eat at night, then of course you can't afford to take any alcohol at all. You cut down the things that you can modify. Okay. So you need no to No alcohol at all, even during the day? Okay, so you, ca you can take alcohol. So we know the things that predispose you to hypertension. Okay. So maybe others can do not eat at night. They don't have a problem with that. Mm. They don't even, they wake up the next morning, they were never hungry. That's okay. But you have the problem of having to eat at night. Mm -hmm. So they can take a little alcohol, but you shouldn't because you already have a bigger problem to deal with, which you think you cannot do anything about. Right. So if um, somebody has to do 30 minutes exercise and you are eating at night, maybe you need to do more exercise. You, you get it. So if you, you need to do a little more to catch up with those who, and then when you eat, it's not about necessarily eating at night, but how soon after eating do you go to bed? Mm. Because there are people that actually do night duties. Doctors, we do a lot of night duties. I will go to work at night. I can eat at night because I will not be sleeping when I go working. on night duties. Yes. Okay. So it depends on how soon after eating do you go to bed. Mm -hmm. And what do you eat at night? Is it something heavy? So eating something light shouldn't be bad. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because talking about the alcohol, are we talking about people who are passive drinkers or um, the, 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 how do, the addicted ones? Which, which one are we talking about? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because there are people watching and obviously they might be taking alcohol as and when okay. and there are people who take it all the time so which one are we talking about well i think alcohol in general eh? yes it's not necessarily about taking it every day or taking it uh, no alcohol in general you see when you break it down to some points there is even a certified measurement for everybody yeah to take as a meal there is uh, a quantity i have to take what's in a, a day what's the quantity what's the quantity okay so um <laughs> this, this can take up to one pint mm. a day yes okay and then women 0 0.5 yes now because of gender equality Z 0 0.5 yes of a, so there are different percentage uh, alcohol so let's say that you yeah. are entitled to um um so one bottle of beer a day, yes, or a pa a, a glass of wine a day, okay, or um, a shot of um. Well, we're talking about a wine yes. that is Scorch giving you seven seven percent, and you're talking about beer that's giving you probably like a five percent. Yes, mm -hmm. so those things are generalized, but if you are looking at the percentages, then maybe you have to be more careful, yeah. because there are beers that have even higher percentages than some wine. It depends okay. on yes. what you are taking. But really, like, I had a patient who said that she drinks occasionally. I mean, he said he drinks occasionally. He only drinks and he goes to funerals. And, but he goes to funerals almost every day. Okay. <laughs> because he's an emotional pain, always going for meetings here and there. So that means every day he drinks. So although he's a, he says he's an occasional drinker, he's going for occasions every day. So that means he's drinking every day. You understand? So sometimes, you know when you are drinking too much. Mm -hmm. Can you just limit it to weekends and make sure you are not drunk? That alone tells us that you are not drinking too much. Yeah. Okay, so now let's also talk about some of the foods that we don't have to eat. Uh, if we stay away from them, we have a higher chance of not to get in high blood pressure. Okay, um, for foods, uh, one major, as I said, is the salt. So, for salt? Yes, we should cut down our salt intake. As I said, salt has the ability of causing water to retain in the body. Okay. So cutting down your salt intake will help the hearts and help the other body uh, organs also to function well. Then also, just as you said, we have to watch our weight. Obesity is, is also a factor. You know, when you put on weight, you get more body tissues. 
So the heart has to beat to feed all these body tissues. Yeah. It means that the heart is going to do more work. Mm -hmm. And the more work means that you are putting the heart at risk as well. So we should watch our weight also. It's very important. Then also l late night eating, mm -hmm. because the late night eating sometimes can give you the weight. If but so they are too. not like necessarily particular types of food because so the salt is, you know, I understand the salt, but I was expecting maybe you tell me a certain food, maybe okay. don't eat this food, or don't okay. eat that food. Okay. That's what I want to Good. hear. Good. Something like carbonated drinks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They don't help the kidneys. And as I said, when the kidneys have issues, it means that the, the blood sure. vessels will also start okay. good. So something like carbonated drink is one. Eating foods that are high in fats mm. is also not advisable because if it's not going like to the, bring... The, the, the butter and the margarine? Yes, okay. the margarine, the butter, um, what even about the peanut fried butter? foods. Peanut, peanut butter? butter, that's what granola paste. Granola yes. paste, yes. Okay. Is, yeah. it, is that okay? Um, we mostly do not advise that. To some extent, even we advise certain soups you're okay. not supposed to be taking certain soup. Like which ones? Um, that will not be depend on maybe you being just hypertensive. Maybe you have some other conditions. Okay. Like, as I said, if you have something like um, cholesterol level is too high, you're not supposed to be taking too much of this peanut butter soup, peanut okay. butter itself. Even, um, uh, is it the abenquine yeah. also? Mm, the palm nut Okay, soup. so something like milk as well. So there are certain things that based on, that's why it's very important that when you feel any symptoms or you check your BP, even at home, and you see that it's gradually going up, you need to see a specialist. Because it's not just about don't eat this, don't yeah. eat that. It's, it's, it's a collective thing. We'll be right back to stay with us. Welcome back. You are still watching Changes. My name is Rosalie Feli. And of course, we are talking about high blood pressure. I'm here with Dr. George Asiyama Jr. He is a medical director at C4C and also Dr. Echo Kuntu Blanksin, who is a medical doctor at Police hospital and that uh, they are teaching us how to prevent it if possible and also how to manage it and that's yeah. what we are going to talk about right now um, we went to town and we heard what people have said uh, people don't check <laughs> they don't check well um, I haven't made it a habit yet but I think after this show I'm going to make it a habit to be checking my mm. blood pressure now how do you manage it if you should go to the hospital and unfortunately you are diagnosed with high blood pressure I'm coming to you Call okay. First. So, um, like most people think, we don't just jump to medications. Um, we first start with um, lifestyle and, and um, the modifiable risk factors, like we mentioned. So, we want you to reduce your weight. We want you to um, eat well. We want you to eat a lot of fruits. We want you to cut down your salt. We want you to stop smoking if you do. Cut down your alcohol if you take a lot of it. And then we try to see if we can find out a specific cause because some actually fall within the five percent of the population who have a definite cause of their hypertension so if you have a kidney problem that is causing that if you have a tumor that is causing that if there is a particular cause then we try and target that cause okay. otherwise we start with the um, life modifications like we mentioned but unfortunately there are some values that we don't we don't even do um, life modifications only we always add life, lifestyle modification, mm. but there are some values that above 140 um, for the systolic and then um, 90, uh, 90 for the diastolic. We want to start you on some medication, maybe low dose uh, antihypertensive, and then monitor you, see how you respond to the medication, and then we move from there. Now, talking about the numbers, uh, what if it fluctuates? Yeah. Will you still put the person on medication or it has to be like immediately it reads that we are going on that medication? So actually, it's important to know that you never diagnose someone with a single value. Mm. So a single value is, we only consider a single value if it's a good one. But if you have a high blood pressure, we want to be certain before we label you. Because you know that for most of these people, they are going to be on this medication for life. So you don't want to label a person by with just one test. It's like you do an HIV test and it's positive. I bet you, you would you would do about five more tests right. just to be sure. Yeah. So first of all, repeat the um, the test a number of times, about three times, and mm -hmm. take an average of the test. We make sure the patient is well rested, 
uh, we make sure they are not anxious. And there's a funny bit that we have one of the hypertension we call white coat hypertension. Mm -hmm. That's the type of hypertension that they only have when they come to hospital. So you can imagine, anytime they come to hospital, their high blood pressure, right. is, their pressure is high. So we also advise that they come for another visit. And if possible, they check at home and bring their values to us so that we work with it. So we want to be certain that it is high blood pressure and not just anxiety or fear before or Before you diagnose before and then actually, you give them medicine. Yes. What about uh, you talking, when you spoke, you did mention that uh, the dosage can sometimes start low. Yeah. Now, we've also heard uh, that when the dosage starts low, uh, whether you like it or not, you are stuck on it for life. How true is this? And if it's not true, tell us. Okay, they, they have been instances where people are no longer taking their antihypertensive medication. Oh, really? That's why it's very important that when you see the symptoms or when you are diagnosed, you take your medication and whatever your doctor tells you very, very importantly. Just as Doc said, sometimes it has to do with the lifestyle changes. And so most of the time, people who are able to, who come in at an early stage, we are able to see it at an early stage. We don't even give any medication sometimes. Sometimes you can start with a lower um, strength that's the medication, a lower strength. Then within some few months, you see that the reading is very Getting normal. Better. And then when you further check ECG, you see that everything is okay. Then with that patient, there is no need to continue giving the medication. Then he or she has to then follow the plan of maybe dieting plan and all that. Then he or she is fine. Okay. Yeah. So it's not a matter of you be on it for the rest of your life. Um, but knowing it at an early stage is very, very important. Right. Yeah. But then those who end up being on it for life, what causes that? Because if somebody can come in and uh, start a dosage, but the person is able to get off it, how is it that others are not able to get off it? Okay, yes. Um, you see, when you first come into any hospital, you, your history is taken. And in the course of history, there is what we call family history. So if people have history, family history of hypertension, mm -hmm. most of the time, if there is that genetic relation, you see that you have it already, it's in the gene. Okay, so all you can do is to make sure you live a certain lifestyle, mm -hmm. not to worsen your condition. Mm -hmm. But those who take it most of the time continuously, is that probably sometimes the default. Some take the medication for a while and then when they see some one or two symptoms or side effects of the medication, mm -hmm. they don't go back. But they then s tell themselves that when I take this, I get this, so mm. I'll stop taking it. Okay. So they end up not taking the medication. And it gets worse. And it gets worse. Some also will take it for a while. When they see that they visit the hospital and the doctor is like, oh, it's getting better. They feel they are okay. Okay. And then they stop taking it mm. also. Mm. So it's it's supposed to work when you start taking the medication. That's why we have to, we give you a review date. So if you take it today, one month or two months, and you come back, there is a technique that we use to check how you are faring, mm -hmm. uh, comparing to the first time you came. If it's so, then we look at reducing the strength for you, or increasing it, or even changing the medication for you at okay. all. So if you do not take your medication judiciously, then you can have that complication right. of you taking it for the rest of your life. Okay, That's but is one this thing. hereditary? Uh, could it be that, you know, it's, it's something that probably it's in the family, hence you also get it? Okay, so, I mean, nobody wants to inherit anything bad. When your mother has good looks, you want to inherit it. When your father has riches, you want to inherit exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> but unfortunately, they pass on everything else. So, um, it says hereditary. Uh, we've seen that the 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 probability of one having it when other family members have it is very high okay. and so it is hereditary unfortunately yeah but on the point of taking the medications for life mm -hmm. i think that most of our patients get uh, rather um should i say agitated when we 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 don't counsel them very well so i would like to put all my patients in the in the position where they are ready to take it for life because more often than not, that is what will be the case. Okay. Um, patients will tell you that I've been on the medication and my blood pressure is good now. Why can't I stop? So 
actually the box can open yeah there is something you put on the box that is keeping it closed mm -hmm. once you remove it the box opens right up again it so, explodes this yes. time so the only way that i tell my patients that you go off the medication is that if your blood pressure is normal and i give you an antihypertensive it should be low okay so if i give you an antihypertensive and your blood pressure is still normal it means that without the antihypertensive it's supposed to go high so more often than not when i diagnose a patient with hypertension i'll give them an extensive lecture on being committed to the medication mm. be ready to take it for life it is possible that you might not take it for life but if the patient is not has not been counseled well that it is possible they'll be to on it for, it life. for life anytime they come doctor when am i stopping doctor when am i stopping and for some of them unfortunately it is, you are not even going to stop you are going to add on more medications right because we start with one medication see how you respond if you are not responding well we add on other medications some take as many as four medications for their uh, hypertension oh wow fortunately now we have drugs that come as a combination of even all four hmm. so you shouldn't be anxious about when you are stopping but then there are side mm. effects to it i mean <laughs> and the side effects are quite strong they yeah. are not uh, side effects that we can just uh, you know close an eye to it yeah let's talk about some of the side effects you you, you can tell us some of them yeah so um some of the side effects like any other medication diarrhea vomiting uh, insomnia not being able to sleep well sometimes feeling tired um sometimes coughing um sometimes even uh, swollen feet and then the chief of them all, especially for the men, is some erectile dysfunction or some sexual weakness, as they like to call it. And that is a, a major problem mm. because I, I have sat with a patient who told me that he would rather die than have erectile dysfunction. So if the hypertension can take him, he doesn't mind. So wow. you can imagine that some of the side effects are so important that so but I always tell them that no, you don't have to But that's choose. scary though. Yes, you don't have to choose between erectile dysfunction and uh, hypertension because there are other drugs. If you're on this drug and you're having that side effect, we can switch it. And, and we can the other drug will not give you same. Yes, different drugs with different side effects, mm. fortunately. And also sometimes a combination of drugs will mean that we can use lower doses of a certain drug. So if you are giving you let's say ten of this drug and it's giving you problems, we can give you five of this drug and another drug so that then the side effects are, are managed all you have to do no matter your side effects is to talk to your doctor mm. so for the ladies do do we also have some particular side effect like when we talk about the men you know erectile dysfunction yeah. does do the ladies have the same something similar as well okay it's the, one of the major things is also as a side effect is frequent urination okay all right okay because most of the Antihypertensive drugs are diaries, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that they help you to pass out a lot of uh, okay. urine. And so there's symptoms, specifically with uh, taking the medication with women. Uh, there's no clear cut that this is for women. Mm -hmm. But one thing that myself, I've been a little studies I've, I've seen, is that most of the time the, the women complain that they rather urinate more than the men. Okay. Okay. Mm. The urine is more. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. And then maybe Doc knows. <laughs> is, that, is that a reason why, Doc? <laughs> I, 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 I have not picked up that from my, my patients. Uh, per se. Like he said, he has noticed it with his yes, patients. So. They, the, the females yeah. do pass on a lot mm. of urine yeah. mm -hmm, than mm -hmm. that of the male. Okay. Um, Doc, I'm, I, I, have, I think I have learned a lot today <laughs> and I'm grateful that you came. Um, you are telling me that I shouldn't drink alcohol, which is very important. No, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, keep it on the low. Yeah. Keep it on the low. Drink responsibly, um, as you drink say. Drink responsibly, mm -hmm. yeah. and also some of the things that you've told us yeah. to look out for. Yeah. And uh, so your final words before you go to anybody out there who has been diagnosed with hypertension or high blood pressure. And for people who have, you know, know that in the family is in there and they are quite scared of it as well. Tell us what to do to prevent it. And for those who have already been diagnosed, what to do to manage it okay so first of all hypertension is not a death sentence and nobody has to die from it um, just walk into any hospital any clinic and get yourself checked and there are so many medications one of the um, the diseases that we have well researched and have drugs that you can take for as many as 80 years without any major side effects and mm -hmm. even if you have we can switch so just walk in when you are diagnosed be committed to your medication because your life is important to us and when it comes to the life lifestyle changes 
it doesn't only help with hypertension, it helps with every other thing that makes you live a healthy life. So exercise, eat well, cut down your alcohol, stop smoking, and then we are good. We are good. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Echo right. Fonsu Blanks. And George, yes. your final words. Yes, my final words is that uh, uh, class is, they say, is permanent, form is temporal. And so if we say exercise, it doesn't mean do exercise that you used to do when you were much 20 years younger. I know. Yes. I mean, when I was 20, I could do more. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so everything should be in moderation. Yeah. And then we should also be adding regular checkup to our, yeah. our life. Because most people do not do checkup. But we eat every day. Mm -hmm. And so there is a need that at least um, we advise that quarterly you just do a normal checkup your whole body to know, but you can walk into any mm. pharmacy or center mm. and you, you will request for your BP to be checked right. and you'll be ever ready to right. do that. Now, let me ask you this final question before we leave. You know, uh, in recent times, we've seen a lot of adverts on TV with these homeopathy people talking about being able to cure uh, high blood pressure. How okay. true is this? Is it okay. curable? Yes. Um, in homeopathy, most of the thing that I know of is that um, they concentrate on organs. And so when you are talking about organs and in relation to hypertension, then you are talking about the heart. And so most of the time, medications are directed to the heart. Um, the heart has got so many parts. And so which parts of the heart? Is it the left ventricle, right, or what? So which part is really having a problem? Then medications are directed there. So it's not about the whole heart, but it's about where the problem is. Is it also the blood vessel? then medications are directed to the blood vessels. So it is a form of another treatment, it's an alternative treatment. It doesn't mean that when you are doing um, conventional treatment for, for go alternative, it doesn't mean that when you are doing alternative to don't do the conventional treatment, you can integrate them. But there is a way of doing it, that's why you need to see a professional, but it can be done. And so you look at the, the organs, and then we look at whether it has also affected other parts of the body as okay. well. So there is a way that in homeopathy, in an alternative treatment, BP can be managed and mm. treated. Mm. Okay, not just taking the medication, but with other combi medications as well it and professional. So it's curable. Yes, in the possibly. Yes. Yeah. But I always say that it's done that way when you come early. Thank you so much for being here, doctors. I'm so grateful. I've been speaking to Dr. George Asiyama Jr., who is a medical director at C4C. And also I've been speaking to Dr. Eko Kuntu Blankson, who is a medical doctor at Police Hospital. So if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way? Let's uh, start with you, Kuntu Blankson. So just walk into a, a good hospital, a recognized hospital, because there are a lot of quacks nowadays. So walk into a recognized hospital. I mean, orthodox medicine, we are not allowed to do any form of advertisement. And so we are not for the money, we are for the health. Okay. So walk into a good hospital, a certified doctor will make sure that you are in good hands. But if a person wants to see you, a call to the vaccine. <laughs> Come to police hospital and ask of me. You'll be there. <laughs> and you? Yes, um, <laughs> just as the doc said, every hospital is high. But um, if you want to also see me personally, you can call on um, 0500403. 31 or 050 0040328. C4C Homeopathic Hospital is all over Ghana. You go to Takradi, we are there. Kumasi, we are there. Cape Coast also. So, wherever Accra, we are here in Accra as well. We are also in uh, Kuforidia as well. So, wherever you are in Ghana, just call this number and we'll be ever ready all to right. assist you. To assist. Yes. Thank you so much for being okay. here. Once again, I keep on saying thank you because. This topic is definitely going to save some lives. I hope you've learned one or two. And for the people out there who said you hardly go check your blood pressure, please change your mind now. Make sure that you go to the hospital and get your blood pressure checked. But just like uh, Doc said earlier, George said, he said that you can go to a homeopathic uh, clinic and get it checked. Probably if you come in early, you could get a cure for it because we don't want any erectile dysfunction. <laughs> We'll be right back to stay with us. Changing. Welcome back from that break. It's time for us to take our spice up segment. 
First pizza is the gone. So we start off. Start off by putting the legs right centered, then you spray out the legs just to make sure it's clean and ready. Head on by disinfecting your cutter or your nipper that you'll be using to prevent any form of infection. Then you cut off the nails, excess nails per the length the customer wants. Right after that, you make sure to file the nails per the design or the shape the customer wants as well. Then you prep on the cuticles by using the cuticle softener, which comes in the form of liquid or solutions. Then move the feet into the water. This is to soften the colors for easy scraping. Then with my scraper, I can start scraping off the colors and the dead skin. At this point in time, once we are done scraping, we move to the cuticle section whereby you use a new trimmer to take off the cuticles. Please make sure it is new to avoid any transfer of infection. So with a new trimmer, I start off by taking off the excess cuticles. nourish the cuticles at this point I'll be using my foot scrub this is to exfoliate any dead skin on the feet
I wash off my pedicure scrub off the client's feet. Everything. of the feet causes time for our massage our foot massage this is mostly the best part of every pedicure where you get a foot massage after here we like to use shea butter our raw shea butter for our pedicures So I rub a little, then I apply on the feet. There you go. You start with a foot massage. This is to help relax the person's feet. And as we all know, reflex is the best part whereby you get all the organs in your feet. So every other organ in the body is being tempted so there's relief in it so you get a foot massage after all pedicures pedicure gives you a refreshing feeling it puts your nails on check and if there's any infection that is coming on your therapist is there to help you if there's any advice that will be given, she gives it out. If it's medically, then you're being advised to see a practitioner ASAP just to put you on check. A little twist then and turns just to make sure every joint is easy. I do a little hit then, then you're good to go. So as you can see, pedicure is all done. So this is how your pedicure should be done. That's how pedicure is being done here. And then you should make sure your nails are being cut well, everything is being checked. Make sure the tools that are being used on you is being sterilized to prevent any form of infection. And if you are not comfortable, please let the therapist know about it. Pedicure should be very relaxing, especially with a massage at the end. My name is Forrester X-Men. I urge everyone to come to X-Men to have their pedicure being done here. We are right opposite Buffet's Pizza or the American House, Baalishu Road. All I invite. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited. I've learned a lot. I know this 2022, I'm going to be living healthy. Uh, we are preventing high blood pressure. If we can't prevent it, we'll manage it as well. Thank you so much for watching the show. Make sure that you do tell people about the show because we learn so much on this show. We give you so much information and of course we entertain you. This is Changes. Don't forget that people do change. Lives change. And we are here to give you all that we take. When we talk about changes. Enjoy the rest of your day. My name is Rosalind. Bye.